Welcome to the Planetary Interaction POS Fuel Production Guide. This is a part of the AVL series from Eve University. This isn't a standalone class, but rather a supplement to existing classes. I'm your instructor, Turin Bay. In this guide, we'll follow the steps needed to create a full POS Fuel production chain, which is a complex multi planet production chain. We'll investigate some methods for planning, identification of candidate systems, construction of our multi-planet production chain, and its maintenance and logistical considerations. POSFUELS is only one example of a multi-planet production chain, and these steps may be modified to create other complex production chains for different commodities. This is an intermediate to advanced guide, which means we assume that you already have a firm grasp on planetary interaction basics. If not, then I recommend our various introductory videos and recorded classes. As many of you POS owners have probably heard by now, you will be able to provide some, but not all, of the items to fuel your POS through planetary interaction. Specifically, you will be able to provide most of the common continuous fuels, coolant, enriched uranium, mechanical parts, oxygen, and robotics. Those fuels that PI will not be able to provide are the ice products, heavy water, liquid ozone, strontium clathrates, and the various isotopes. This does mean that your POS fuel needs may be fully provided through a combination of planetary interaction and ice mining. Or, as always, you can purchase these materials on the common market from other players who may be selling them. But what planet types do we need to create these items? To answer that, we look to the EVE University Wiki at the Planetary Commodities page and find all five of these items in the production tables. From here we can see that Oxygen is a P1 product, Coolant, enriched uranium, and mechanical parts are all P2 products. And robotics is a P3 product. The best way to determine all of the raw resources that we will need to create all of these different products is to create a table and list them all out. We'll create ourselves a basic spreadsheet in Google Docs to jot down all of our notes. First, Make column headings for the planets and the P0 through P4 items, and leave some extra space in the planets column. Then fill in each of the final commodities that we want. Leave a row for each raw resource that the commodity will require. So oxygen will get its own row, but leave two rows for each coolant, enriched uranium, and mechanical parts, and four rows for robotics. Remember that robotics, which is a P3 product, requires two P2 materials, which in turn require two P1 materials each. Now we just fill in the cells to the left of these items with all of the requirements at each step. We can find all these requirements on the Planetary Commodities wiki page. We also fill in the planet types where we may find the raw resources. For example, oxygen comes from noble gas, which is found on gas, ice, and storm planets. Coolant requires water, which comes from aqueous liquids, which is found on barren, gas, ice, oceanic, storm, and temperate planets. Coolant also requires electrolytes, which come from ionic solutions, which is found on gas and storm planets. and so on. We fill up our spreadsheet with all the requirements for all of the commodities that we want to produce. You may notice at this point that we have a number of duplicate products. For example, we have two entries for mechanical parts, one for the actual mechanical parts that we need as fuel, and another to create robotics. Another example are three entries for precious metals two of which are used to create our two instances of mechanical parts, and one to create our enriched uranium. Instead of removing these duplicates, we'll leave them in our table so that we can see at a glance what we need in larger volumes of certain raw materials. This will be important when we try to determine how many extractors we want to dedicate to each resource. Now we have all the information that we need to determine what planets we require. But if you take a close look at the planets column, You'll see that all of our P0 resources may be found on at least two planets each. This gives us a good deal of leeway when selecting a location for our POS fuel production lines. 
Remember that we want to simplify our logistics, and so we want to use as few systems as possible and have them as close to one another as possible. It would be even nice to do it all on a single system, if we can. This is especially true for wormhole operations, because we'll always be restricted to a single system. Having a choice of planets greatly increases this possibility of finding all the planet types that we need in a single system, or at least within close proximity in multiple systems. For example, given the rarity of plasma planets, we may not be able to find one in our target area, but at least we might still be able to find the alternate planet types that contain the resources that we need. This also makes it plain to see that if no plasma planets are available, then we definitely need to find a barren and a lava planet. If we can't, then we must either look elsewhere, or we'll need to purchase those commodities on the market to keep our POS fuel processing chain going. Next, let's find out how much of each commodity we need to churn out. We'll use a standard large POS in our example, but you can follow the same reasoning for a medium or small POS, or a faction tower, after adjusting the values involved. As any good possum knows, these are the values you need per fuel item per hour. Let's start simple and look at our oxygen needs. Our large POS requires 25 oxygen per hour continuously, so our fuel production lines need to churn out oxygen at this rate or greater. From the Planetary Commodities page on the wiki, we see that P1 items are processed at the rate of 20 items per 30 minute cycle. So, we're fine as long as we run at least two cycles per hour, and in fact, we'll have plenty left over. Okay, that was too easy. Let's take a look at our most difficult commodity, robotics. We need only one unit of robotics per hour to fuel our large POS. Down in the P3 section of the wiki page, we see that P3 items are processed at the rate of only three units per 60 minute cycle. So if we process a cycle once every three hours, then we're all set. However, Remember that this is a complex three-stage chain. To run this single cycle, we need 10 consumer electronics and 10 mechanical parts. Moving up to the P2 section of the wiki page, we see that P2 items are processed at the rate of five units per 60 minute cycle. Okay, that's still not bad. We need 10 units of each every three hours. And so we need two cycles of each to run at some point within that three hour window. The question is now, what volume of P1 materials do we need to supply two P2 cycles in three hours? Each P2 cycle requires 40 units of the P1 materials, so to support two P2 cycles, we need 80 units of each of the P1 material in those three hours. Still with me so far? We go up to the P1 section of the wiki page and see that P1 items are processed at the rate of 20 items per 30 minute cycle. So to make the 80 units that we need, we must run four cycles within our three hour window. Finally, we see that at each of those four cycles, we require 3000 units of our P0 raw material, or a total of 12,000 units in that three hour window, or 4000 units per hour of those four raw resources that we need to eventually make robotics, which are non-CS crystals, heavy metals, noble metals, and base metals. We'll go ahead and add that info to our spreadsheet, and we'll colorize it a bit just to make it easier to read. Dope! It looks like we're about to hit our YouTube time limit again, so we'll continue this in part two of our Planetary Interaction POS Fuel Production Guide.